Because sometimes you just have to go shopping. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. Went to Dollar Tree the other day. One of my favorite glasses broke. I know you've probably heard this story before. If you're new here, I get my favorite glasses from Dollar Tree. And once in a while, they break. Because they're from Dollar Tree. And I go there when I'm in the neighborhood to get another glass. And usually... I come out with a couple extra goodies, and that's what happened here this time. I was looking for a couple of specifics, and I found those, and a few extra, as I said. We'll start with these, because they're just fun. Rounded ears make this a French Bulldog rather than a Boston Terrier, but he's shiny, and he's purple, and he's got way cool glasses, and it's a dog, and it sort of has the Boston mask, so I had to have it. Didn't I have to have it? Now I have it. And purple paw prints. <laughs> purple lines. I had to have this book for $1.25. Makes me giggle. In addition to the broken glass that I needed to replace, I went specifically looking for either a sketchbook, spiral bound sketchbook, or something like that. Uh, maybe a blank scrapbook or something like that to use as a glue book. I've seen Nicole at Relax Cut Glue. She gets these similar square. I don't know what size they are. It really doesn't matter. I believe she said she got hers at Target. There's four of these little books in here. And I think, I think they're ideal for glue booking. Pick a theme, random glue book. I mean, they're just tiny, tiny little guys. I think it says there's 16 pages per. So it's not... It's not going to be a killer project to finish. It's just thin paper, very thin paper. And I just thought that would be fun. They're just stapled together. Maybe worth the quarter, 30 cents that they are. But I thought it'd be so much fun just to for quick smaller projects. Do a quick spring one or a quick purple book or something about dreaming big. Use the cover for inspiration. Maybe a rainbow journal. Probably not. Probably not. But an idea journal. Certainly ideas, light bulbs. That's fun. Uh, peace. Peace love in the 60s. Could be that. Could be a color since there's rainbow. Could just cover it and make anything you want. This is shiny so you could gesso it and paint on it. There's so many options. So I picked up three of these. Each one, I'll probably leave the cover, at least one of them, that way, and then cover the rest of them. Because remember, each one has four in it. So now I have 12 small, fairly small. I mean, page-wise, they're, they're not tiny, like a, like a zine. You know, that's a small glue book size. But as far as number of pages, it's not a big random, and it's not 200 pages of an encyclopedia you're trying to cover. It's just something small and doable. Could also, you know, just be for sketching out ideas. There's there's a lot of uses for these in the craft room. It doesn't have to be a glue book at all. It could just be a place to dream big or keep track of your bright ideas or write up some quotes that just make you smile. Janet Nash is working on a, she said, I'm just going to spend some time putting smiles in my smile journal. <laughs> I thought, that is beautiful. And she has started a whole journal just of people smiling because it changes the way you feel when you look at you know, people. People don't do a thing for me, but dog, dogs smiling. We've all seen pictures of dogs smiling. So I could do just a glue book of smiling happy dogs. That would make my heart glad. Keep track of uh, happy quotes, quotes that uplift, quotes that inspire. You know, there's lots and lots and lots of uses for these little guys. So I got a few of them because I I don't go I don't go there since they they're now dollar twenty five tree. As I said before, that that quarter makes a difference in my you know oh it was a buck oh it was a dollar. Well the dollar twenty fives you know that's a instead of it being twenty dollars. It's twenty two fifty or something like that. You know me and math. I suck at it. But it's more expensive. And that takes the fun out of it for some of us. But that didn't stop me. Now did it. So I got these two smaller notebooks. I love that. Living the dream. Living the dream. Just a little composition book. Now again, this can be a, 
a glue book. It can be anything that you want it to be. It can just be a notebook. It can be uh, visiting your dreams every day, gluing in on each page something that inspires you, and then each day writing down something that you're doing toward your goals or what would life be once you hit that goal or anything that you want to spend some time dreaming about. You could just have that kind of a journal. It could be it could be anything. They had a different, I don't think I have this ribbon with the pugs and the Frenchies. I'm pretty sure I have this one, but I'm doing a project that I know I'll need more for, so I got another. Eventually you'll see this. I'm doing a little cat journal. So these cat stickers, I took it out of the cellophane because it was obnoxious, hard to see. So some cat catitude stickers to add to that project. I thought that would be fun. I really like using these coloring books as pages and journals just tear them out fold them in half and it makes a really cool addition to a to any kind of junk journal no matter the theme or the color scheme they all go i've seen a couple at saint vinnie's where the pages are yellowed so you could even use them in a, in a vintage book if you'd like uh, of course you can vintage it up and put it in a vintage book and my mom and i have been working on making a truckload of journals that are this size. This is made out of a one 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. There's a little pocket there, a little tuck there, and a pocket here. I've sewn in one small signature pocket in the back, and it's just a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that's folded, folded a few times, and then just scrap papers. I'm pretty sure, because this is how I do things, and usually I don't give measurements, but I think what I did was try to make sure that I just had to tear pages in half. I didn't have to trim and custom size pages. I just had to tear copy paper in half, fold it in half, and there's my pages. And I found these little guys. This is the normal size, but they had just these little ones. And I thought those would be perfect, perfect additions to these little journals. I only have the one put together. All the rest are, are still loose, so we're still building them. And I used all kinds of scrapbook paper. Heavy duty, this is super thick, heavy duty, embossed, shiny scrapbook paper. And this is just plain old Jane scrapbook paper. I've got all different kinds. I think I made about 30 of the covers. And then mom and I are decorating the pages. And so I will just stick these one of each of these pages in each journal because I think they just make such a nice page you know a little doodle spot and they're a perfect size I don't have to cut anything down I'm not losing anything I have the entire thing intact and just because it's a little bit smaller that's fine I'd rather have it smaller and fit in versus larger that I have to trim because time is money baby and I don't like wasting the time on that stuff so that's what I got these for and I also like that they're patterns and paisleys, more patterns, and more patterns. They're not butterflies, and they're not flowers, and they're not birds. They're just patterns, you know, because not everybody likes birds. Not everybody loves butterflies. So I like that they're just nondescript things, and they can go in any one of the journal, whether it's a sunflower journal or a black and white sort of gothic journal doesn't matter i love the size so that's why i got those this i got specifically because it made me giggle the first book that i really remember the big book was my dr seuss dictionary i loved that book so I, i'm a big fan of dr seuss although really the dictionary is the only book that i had because my mother was not a fan of dr seuss she's more the realistic science math kind of a thinker uh, than the fanciful thoughts of oh the places you'll go with dr seuss but i did get the dictionary someone else must have got it for me she said because i would never have bought that for you i could use it to color just to unwind at the end of a day i could use it in my personal glue books i i, I think i'll just have it to have it color it if i feel like it you know on those those days when you just don't have enough brain cells to do much else, you can almost always color. I got this for Ugly Betty. Ugly Betty, 
Not sure where she's at right now. I used all my ugliest stuff to put together my one of my first journals and I named her Ugly Betty and it's all fall colors. And I got this for Ugly Betty because as I've been working on her, as often happens, things that are kind of homely, the more you love you give them and the more you work on them, uh, she's turned out to be kind of cool. So I got this for Ugly Betty. Make her feel better about herself. I've been looking for these Spot the Difference books. I've heard Nicole at Relax Cut Glue mention them a few times and I've looked and looked and looked and they never have them but this time they had them and the reason she likes them is because they're filled with so many cool pictures. You know, red for a glue book, red hammer, silver stuff, blue wrench, yellow tape measure, those kind of things and there's all you know some nice brights sometimes there's some weird crap going on like this teal would be a fun background for anything hot pink suit put her in the pink section two cans i know janet has done things with two cans there's weird shit you know because why not and there's always two of everything or more some of these for some reason i don't know how they work because i haven't read it yet but i'll hear from my uncle's nautical book some of them have purple food. I have a purple food project that I'm collecting for. I don't know if it's going to be a glue book or a journal of some sort, but I've been collecting purple food. So that's what made this one go in the basket. Plus I like that weird guy with the half face, half, half machine, half human. There's a lot of things in here that I would use. And then you can use these little black and white bits for things as well. A little beastly. Some of them have, let's see if I can find one. One of these is not like the others. Can you spot which one? And so there's six versions of those surfboards. A wine guy serving up some wine. He's got black overalls or, a, yeah, it looks like overalls black. He could go because he's wearing black and he's got jet black hair. He might go in a black part of a color glue book underwater those beautiful yellow fish hot pink black and white tropical so pretty so there's a lot of stuff that can be harvested in these things other you know gives you another place to look for goodies this will go with my cat journal of course and a christmas journal christmas cookies galore these could cut off the numbers fold them in half and this could be your tabs they're wide but but they'd be perfect tabs cut them in half and use just smaller ones so maybe it would be a christmas cooking journal christmas cookie book and these would be perfect tab page edging so i was so happy blue black and white because i've got color color glue booking on the on the mind can you tell food glorious food and a beastly so cute i don't know if he's in here or not i think he is there he is look how cute he would be the cover of my spring journal, my Easter spring journal. If I were doing one, he'd be the cover. So I got three of those. They only had three different ones, so I got one of each. And again, just lots of bright, different things to play with. Little dude. And there's six of him. Fun food. Bright colors. Babies. Oh, baby ducks. Terrific fun. I love this. Oh, look at that bike. Isn't that wonderful? Filled with yummy food from the farmer's market. So festive. I just love that bike. And the last thing I got from the Dollar Tree are these books. Specifically for, I want to make a sort of grimoire. Not a spells and potions book, but a dark fairy tale theme, something or other. This is one of my favorite things of all time. And this, this started out as a Dollar Tree book. Uh, I think it's Gaslight is the name of it. I believe it doesn't matter because can't find it there now I've had this a few years this is an internet art that I got a torn book page behind him that I I took the Stabilo pencil and shaded it a little bit put a little bit of Mod Podge obviously the the uh, store-bought kind because look how shiny I wonder if I put my homemade over that if that would take that shine off because that's really the only thing I don't like about it is that sheen on that cover
I put a faux spine on it. I just made this on Canva so it looks like those spines. And I just, you know, at a glance, it looks like it, it belongs there. I can fold up some little pieces of twine and make a three-dimensional ribs, maybe, I think they're called. But Heartbeats at Our Feet, The Art, Beauty, and Grace of Dogs. This was going to be just all dogs, but I've got so much in here, it's just going to be all my Bostons. My Bostons and other Bostons, like cards and, and calendars and post-its and all kinds of things. Even though there's a pug in there, there's one or two interlopers that aren't Boston. But this is one of my very favorite things ever, and I want to make something similar for my cousin's dark fairy tale wedding. And I liked the size of this. So as an altered book, I'll take out about a third to a half of the pages in here. I like it because it's um, beautiful black spine. Or, excuse me, it's beautiful black cover. I'll, I'll put corner things on here and I might distress it, age it a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Give it a new spine, although that is pretty darn cool. It does not go with my theme at all, although that little bird does, razor bill. He's kind of cool. Uh, so I'll cover the spine and then make something like my dog book for that. And one or the other of these will work for that. I'm not sure. This one is a little bit taller, but quite a bit narrower too. So I'm not sure if either of these will work. I'm going to try it out and we'll see. But I wanted to get two books that had nice black covers. I just love the size of this one. It feels right, so it'll probably be this one. I thought that was an awesome graphic that I could cut out and use in something. Some torn bits of tape or paper. So that's my Dollar Tree haul. I had I had a really, really good time. Oh, and I got this contact paper there at the Dollar Tree, too, to make a different backdrop so you don't have to look at my dirty, nasty craft table all the time. Thank you very much for spending some time with me here. So go and give yourself permission to spend a little money on toys. It's okay. It's okay, and it's fun, and it makes you feel good. Just don't do it all the time, every time. So now I've, I've got to find a home for all this because remember, I just cleaned my room, and I'm filling it up. I, th I, think, I think there's something wrong with the girl, but she's having a good time, so we're just going to let her be for now. So I've already started cutting this up. Here's a, a PS on, on a couple of things. So I just read the back of this one day what this is about, and I think I'll probably read it. So the author of this book is a two-time Pulitzer winning writer, asked strangers to literally pick a random day, month, and year from a hat. And that day turned out to be Sunday, December 28th, 1986. By any conventional measure, a most ordinary day. And between Christmas and New Year, that Sunday between Christmas and New Year, December 28th, turned out to be filled with comedy, tragedy, implausible irony, cosmic comeuppances, kindness, cruelty, heroism, so whatever. So one day took six years to research and write. So he asked all kinds of questions about what happened on that day. He researched what happened on an ordinary day. And then he wrote about it. 500 interviews in the making, six years of 500 interviews. The people described in this book are wonderful and flawed, some of them evil, some of them impossibly good, but none of them have lived the kind of lives that normally get told in books. And in finally seeking them out and telling their stories, Jean has done them and us a priceless service. So one day is just a random day. An extraordinary story of an ordinary 24 hours in America. That to me sounds like a pretty cool read, especially that it's been written by a, an award-winning writer, so it should be well edited, no spell problems, no grammar problems, like you hear here when I talk. <laughs> because I never talk anymore. I, the only people I ever talk to are my family and the camera. And I don't talk to my family that often. Oh, and Leanne, but we usually text. So that's in writing. And I, I spell check all of my, I double check, I edit, I rewrite, I rework, I revise all my texts. So I'll probably read this before I do any damage to it. And if I really like it as a book, well, then I'll go get another one to destroy or use the one that I kind of, but I already cut up the cover. And as I was cutting up the cover, I thought, oh, well, this sounds kind of interesting. Maybe I should read it.
The other PS to this is when I was a reporter, early on, I think it was my second year of being a reporter, I had a pretty big story to write and I was a nervous wreck about getting all the quotes right and getting the story down in a way that it would be well read, well received. I mean, you can't really choose how people receive the news, but I wanted I wanted so much for it. To, it was an important story in our community and I worked so hard on it and I worried about it. It kept me up at night several nights in a row as I my deadline approached and and I wrote the story, you know, with a great <sighs> exhale sigh of relief and then kind of just braced like I hope 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 all is right I hope I got my quotes right I hope I got the players you know what they were trying to get across I hope that I was clear with that and as jobs do I went on to the next task and the day after my big story came out I was interviewing the manager of our local humane society animal shelter uh, they were having trouble with feral cats and so she had me whoever I met said oh well go and ha go ahead and wait for her in the cat room I'll tell her you're here and send her in so I went in the cat room and the story that I worked so hard on was now lining because it was a day or two after my story had run in the paper under all the cat boxes were my story my headline my byline and that thing that kept me up at night and I worried so hard about it you know it's here today gone tomorrow to you know, today's news is tomorrow's cat box liner. And that same day, or around that same day, I was the education reporter. You get a lot of free stuff when you write about things, you know, if you write about restaurants, they send you food certificates. If you write about clothes, then they send you free clothes. If you write about books, they send you advanced readers' copies. And because I was the education reporter, I got a reading month book kit and it, it's always dr seuss based and it's k through k through 12 i think or k through 6 uh, for national reading month and there was a cat and hat hat in it a real live i could put it on cat and hat hat dr seuss hat anytime i felt like i was getting too serious about you know like worrying too much i always worried about getting it right and i always worried about doing the best job i could but when it came to hyper worrying about it, I put this hat on and told myself, don't take it so seriously, like lighten up. It'll be okay. You're going to do fine. And I think that's another reason this appeals to me. I, I see myself keeping it near my workstation. And when I'm getting too wound up about whatever I'm working on, I'm running out of time. This isn't good enough. You know, that loudmouth a-hole critic that lives in inside my head. I will visit my Dr. Swiss coloring book and just loosen up a little bit lighten up it's gonna be fine so i think that's another reason why this tickled my fancy that's your bonus for the day don't take life so seriously it's only life after all you know we gotta have more fun i think we should spend less time trying to be happy and more time seeking out fun and we will we will be automatically happier that includes reading good stories and playing with your toys Go love up those beastlies and have a lovely, lovely crafty day. Matek at the lake, out for now.